got everything clicking. All right, here we go. It starts in three. Oh, you're going to love this. <laughs> Maybe I already played this for you. I don't know, but here it is anyway. In three, two, one. Hey, can you say flamingo? Thank you. <laughs> you flew into the octopus star center. <laughs> Now, all I have is a mission. This is the morning stream. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to TMS. It's the morning stream for more, what is it, April 12th, 2021. Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett here. Hello, Brian. That's right. Hello, Scott. So we found his keyword. He found his trigger word to say the F word. And uh, <laughs> boy, not just the F word, but the, you know the F U, the whole yeah, the whole schmear. And the thing is, we yeah. were really struggling to find it for his mom. It was frog and frog off and things like that when she was his age. And yeah, so we finally found it. It's the word flamingo. Here, I'll play it again. Hey, can you say flamingo? Frog you. There you go. <laughs> It just sounds like he's saying, no, F off. I'm not, I'm not saying Flamingo. It's, it's funny how it's like a question, though, right? Like, F you. Well, that's the, other, that's the other funny thing. I don't know if this is all kids, but because everyone's saying, can you say chicken? Yes. Can you say hint, hint? So the voice is always going, burp, burp, burp. He, now everything he says is, burp, 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 no matter he's what it is. He's repeating the intonation as well as the, right. Yeah, like if he's showing you his inflection. dinosaur, he doesn't go, dino. He goes, Dino? Dino? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great. Anyway, uh, hey, we're back, everybody. We hope you had a nice weekend and uh, happy to report that I had really no COVID uh, second shot problems. It was just tired. Yeah. Just sleepy. And uh, that yeah. may have been, honestly, I mean, how can I even say for sure that that wasn't just me being tired? You know, I mean, well, have been you know, anything. there's something to that, though, because um, I've felt tired since uh, March of. 2020 so maybe there's something to that scott uh, maybe maybe we're all just a little <laughs> tired but yeah i didn't have any weirdness i was talking to my brother-in-law last night i'd forgotten i didn't forget but he got full-blown covid uh some six months mm. ago and um because we didn't see him you know you're not directly involved with it so you don't really know what happened but i guess it got really bad he went to the er oh, no. couldn't breathe oh, God. like it was bad he told me at one point he thought he was going to die and I didn't know that, and that just took me yeah. off guard last night. I'm like, holy shite. So um, the reason that came up is he said, he was saying, oh, you got your shots. I said, yeah, just my other one was on Friday or whatever. And he goes, he goes, oh, yeah, we're still trying to decide if we're gonna what we're going to do. And I thought, wait, I know him. He's not going to not get a – he's not a vax an, a anti-vaxxer or anything. Right, I'm like, what right. are you even talking about? Plus, you've had it. Your antibodies are probably about, about up. You know, it's time to do it. And he said mm – -hmm. uh, I'm just really hesitant to 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 feel that way again. <laughs> and I said, "Really?" He says, "Yeah, it was the worst. He's never he's never felt anything that bad in his life. Huh. It's the worst, the worst oh, condition. Oh, he's good wow. now, though. Everything's good. He yeah. does say he says he never he's never quite breathed the same, uh, oh which is a God, bummer, sense. right? Yeah, uh, you don't want to hear that. But they they say that well, but they say that some th some of those symptoms 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 take a long time. The Simpsons. Some of those symptoms take a long time to uh, to, to go away. I made you spit take, didn't wow, I? Wow. Yeah. Literally, some of it got out <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Brian timed that perfectly. Well done. That made me laugh. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Some of them just go on forever. Protracted symptoms, man. But uh. He'll be all right. He's doing good. And yeah. it was, uh, we got to see my mom last night. She's all shot it up and good to go. And she's good. got more energy and movement and like laughter and stuff than she ever did before this brain oh, surgery. That's... We're starting to be convinced that for the last 12 years that she, that, that tumor was making her kind of grumpy and, and, yeah. And they rewired something while they were in there. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> she's so just upbeat and, and just that's like great. positive oh. and moving around like, all this new energy, freaking 82, we're just rocking it. It's making us real happy. So had a fun uh, night, but I got this question for you. Yeah. Are the tacos I ate racist? Now I'll give you some background. <laughs> I'll need it. <laughs> <laughs> My sister decided that she was going to make, um, and this, by the way, was an exciting moment because everybody is uh, vaccinated. Cool. And so we, cool. it was a first time for us to get together in some form yeah. with full, you know, with everybody being 
uh, vaccinated and or living on late stage antibodies of actually catching the disease six months ago or four months ago, whatever it was. So anyway, we're all there together and it's great. It's not too many people, but enough to have a good nice time. My sister and her kids and their kids and all that. And uh, they, we decided to have Navajo tacos. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh -huh. Now people have heard of these. Uh, a lot of fairs, yeah. you know, like you'll like go to a fair, a local county fair or something. They'll have a a, t a stand that will sell yeah. Navajo tacos. There's a there's a Navajo taco place here in Denver that is good enough and big enough, popular enough that it was on the Travel Channel or Food Network or something like that. Ooh, that sounds good. I bet they're, yeah, I've never bet been there. I <laughs> <laughs> don't know why, but uh, we need to go there. And check Pro it out. Probably better. Well, what we had last night was okay, but it was probably better than what we had. It was all pretty thrown together. I don't think we really know what we're doing uh, when it comes sure. to the, the true Navajo taco. But here's the question: As I was okay. eating these, it, it always involves like fried fried bread thing for the bottom, and then you can put beans and Kim made pulled pork for it, and and then you put the the other stuff on it, and whatever, and you kind of make this. It's more like a tostada almost, and less mm -hmm. of a taco. I guess you can bend them and get them in taco form. But anyway, there's no way that there's really there was ever really a Navajo taco. You know what I mean? Like there's no like back in the Navajo Nation times when they were a proud people and we hadn't come screwed them over yet. They didn't have like it's taco night, you guys. We're having taco. Like it, this is a made um, up thing, right? We all didn't we yeah, just we made think this up. I know. I think it's. I think it's something that, you know, every um, every culture has their fried bread food, right? Yeah. And and then they just top it with stuff. So like you know, or they fill it with something. So, you know, if you got your um, your dumplings and your, I guess it's more like fried pasta, but um, right. But I mean, there there you know there are quite a few different things like that. I don't doubt at all that. Uh, that they would fry they make their basically it's the fried bread or fry bread with mm. stuff on top of it well here's here's the here's a here's some information that mm -hmm. i found that i want to share with everybody. okay all right so maybe i'm going to get educated here. Yeah. <laughs> well i don't know actually we, me me as well but fry bread is 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 main is the main thing here so when, right. when people call them a navajo taco or an indian taco or whatever they're referring to this no one says mm -hmm. indian taco anymore i don't think no Nope. Um, <clears throat> and maybe there's an actual taco in India that prefers the title. Maybe, Indian yeah, taco. like a curry taco or something. <laughs> Sounds really oh, good. Oh, that sounds all right, doesn't it? Curried meat, curried meat in a taco. It's funny we had, we had both uh, mm. uh, tacos, tostadas, and uh, curry this weekend. So <laughs> it all sounds good. Ugh, it sounds really good. Plus, you yeah. uh, naan would be your uh, your taco shell. You know, like your the... your Eastern Indian, right? Oh. And that stuff doesn't bend. You'd have to. Oh could eat it for days actually no non non bends it's the crispy stuff that you get the um there's like the crispy non that you can get oh is there a crisp i didn't know about no crispy yeah. non. what about where crispy have i been? i don't know what it's called though but it's they have it at the yak and yemi well all right so here's what anyway it says. all right so okay the navajo history, the history of it according to navajo tradition fry bread was created in 1864 using flour sugar salt and lard and was given to them by the United States government when the Navajo, uh, who were living in Arizona, were forced to make a 300-mile journey known as the Long Walk and relocate to Bosque Rinaldo, New Mexico, uh, onto that land that could not easily support their traditional staples of vegetation and beans. Uh, New Mexican cuisine style sopapillas and share, let's see, and also share the origin due to Pueblos and Hispan Hispanos, they say here from New Mexico, having a similar sustenance at the time. Uh, so, boarding schools also helped to spread fry bread as, a nat as, as Native American diets. So, we did force, we did bring it up. <laughs> mm, yeah. 1864 is like not that, you know, that was like we were there being dicks. And uh, we said, hey, I know you can't grow your corn here, but don't worry, you can just fry this bread. This is good interesting. stuff. Yeah. That's really interesting. So I I didn't realize that uh even the fry bread has has um uh Well they don't teach us this stuff in school, man. They no, they really don't. No. They know we had a Navajo me. staying with us. Uh Tristan's girlfriend is Navajo. She stayed with us and uh uh we never really talked about any of this stuff. Yeah. I mean she may not know the history of it, so Yeah. But, um, and there is a, huh. I mean, the controversy, I guess, is, well, there's a whole section here that says controversy. It says, um, 
It is often associated with traditional Native American cuisine. Some Native American chefs respect it as a symbol of colonialism, or reject it, rather. Inge- uh-huh. uh, indigenous chef Sean Sherman calls it everything that isn't Native American food, writing that it represents per- uh, perseverance and pain, ingenuity, and resilience. It reminds me of when uh, the army brought all the spam to the islands, to mm-hmm. the Pacific Islands mm-hmm. during the war, and now spam yeah, and is like part just of everything. Hawaii loves it. Yeah, Hawaii can't get enough of spam masubi and stuff, right? Yeah, and they and we look, we Utah literally named after the Ute Indians. Okay, that's the name of our mm-hmm. state. Uh, I felt like I had a really good, uh, relatively good education growing up about Native American studies and just kind of generally mm-hmm. pretty good. But in this one case, I don't. Uh, all I know is I'd go to a fair and there'd be Navajo tacos and we'd all get excited and eat them, and that's all I yeah. know about it. So yeah. Huh. Very interesting. All anyway, right, well, there yeah, you go. For those who didn't know that, Utah, based on the Utes. That's why... The more you know. <laughs> that's why... I uh, mean, it's, uh, it's kind of like French fries, right? How, oh, you know, right. they're they're modeled after Belgian frites, yeah. and uh, we just attribute them to the French, and even the French didn't really have anything to do with them. Yeah. Well, I will say this. I had two, and I regret it. Okay? That's all <laughs> They were good. They were good enough. Yeah. I won't say they were yeah. very... They didn't, they didn't... They weren't, like, fantastic, but they... They got the job done. Yeah, cool. the more you know. Nice. Good job, all band kind. <laughs> well done. Make that a show title. Uh, the Utes, like that's why, why why it's controversial here where people want to change the University of Utah's team from the Utes to the fighting Utes to something else um, out of sensitivity for Native American stuff. But they, uh, they argue, or some have argued, well, no, we're just like, it's Utah Utes. Like the whole state's named after an Indian tribe or a Native American tribe and they don't want us to change it I don't know it's complicated man all I know is uh, there weren't enough beans okay back to the point <laughs> not enough right. beans alright we got an email from Frank Whirl 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 Frank Whirl would you say Whirl be I would say Whirl yeah W-E-H-E or yeah because you wouldn't do the Whirl yeah okay. Whirl what a wonderful Whirl, whirl. Uh, <laughs> he says this uh, he sent this email to uh, what is it? The morning stream at gmail.com is our email address. And he said, Dear Shredded Wheat and Banana Nut Crunch, he's a serial defender, he says. Okay. All right. I've been listening to your recent discussions and criticisms of grape nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just saw that guy again in my head. Out I know you wanted to. You wanted to do. <laughs> I don't know how to do angry, his voice. I don't know how to do it. But I angry it. letter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, he says, I've been waiting on someone to speak up and defend this bastion of my youth. Well, I blame your parents if that was a bastion of your youth. But anyway, <laughs> but not or sorry, since no one has done it yet, I suppose I'll have to. I grew up with yeah, grape there's nuts. There's a the reason house. nobody's done it yet. Yeah, because they're eating rocks, dude. Yeah, That's why exactly. no one's done it. Yes. Um, <laughs> says I grew up with grape nuts in the house as a kid, mostly due to my mother who infrequently ate, uh, ate it when not rushing out the front door for, uh, in the mornings. I think I liked it though heavily drowning it in sugar. <laughs> well, he's really going to bat for this, isn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> I think I liked it, but I had to bury it in sugar to see if it was okay. Yeah. Anyway, he says he did it mostly for the texture. No, you did it for the taste as well. You just didn't know it. For the sugar taste, yeah. Yeah. After having to wait 10 minutes for the milk to soak in, yes, it's one of those rare instances where the cereal tastes the uh, better soggy than fresh. Yeah, because it's grape nuts. Yeah, because it will break something in your mouth if you don't let it. That's Here's the thing. If you have to drown it in sugar and wait for it to get soft in milk for 10 minutes, uh, maybe that's not a good cereal. Yeah, this is a terrible argument so far. Your Honor, I, <laughs> I protest, Your Honor. I implore you, I Your implore Honor. I implore you. This is a terrible defense. All right, it says, goes on to say, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I <clears throat> I don't really buy it much anymore, but every, one, <laughs> every once in a blue moon, <laughs> Uh, I'll pick up a box and remind, it'll remind me of my mother who passed away far too early at the age of 59. That is too early. 59's too early. Don't be dying so early, everybody. Everybody live longer. Yeah, sure. um, and then I have to finish it so no one else in my house will touch the stuff. Oh, because no one else will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really? This is a terrible defense, by the way. I know. Uh, yeah. I know I'm not really giving a ringing, endorse, a ringing endorsement here, um, but I thought I would share the rest of the story. He says, I appreciate the laughs you guys bring to us in these weird days. Keep it up, Frank. Well, Frank... You haven't convinced me. I'm still still firmly in the camp of I don't want to eat your your freaking aquarium rocks. Thank you very much. Yeah. You didn't do it. 
<laughs> Back I mean, okay, yeah. if you use it as a as texture for a bowl of yogurt, right? You're not having a bowl of grape nuts. You're having a bowl of yogurt, and you're sprinkling some grape nuts on there for texture. Sure. That's one thing. Right. But if you're dedicating, you're saying, all right, biggest item in the bowl is grape nuts. Apparently, the second biggest item in the bowl is sugar. Yeah. And then the milk to <laughs> turn it into a sludge. To liquefy it, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, you're not selling me at nope. all. Nope. Uh, your client, you owe your client uh, legal fees for for your for your exactly. terrible defense yes. of your of your client, your client being grape nuts. So well done. Uh, mm. Hey, I heard you got to see uh, Barry Ann and Bobby Folks. <laughs> I did. Yes, they left just a little bit ago, uh, right before the show started to head to the airport. But uh, uh, Barry and Bobby Ann uh, were our guests last night, actually. They stayed with us, but they took us out for an incredible meal over at the Wolf's Tailor. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, the men, tell me about this menu real quick. Brian sends this menu over, and it looked oh, like... Oh, well, the, that's a different place. Oh, yeah. all right, all right. The Wolf, Wolf's Tailor was a, is a restaurant where you, you, again, because of COVID, they put these up last year, and um, they're like yurts. They're tents, like safari tents. Okay. And you've got one all to yourself, and they just keep bring you food they peek in see if you need anything there's a little fireplace in there and um lights and decorations and stuff on the wall and uh and they just keep bringing us uh you know bringing us food and amazing stuff sounds really, fantastic really stuff. yeah i'd be into yes. that sounds and fun. wine pairings with each course and mm. um octopus and and curry and a duck leg and that was all <laughs> it was all amazing Strange combination, but all right. It is. Now, <laughs> even though they gave us dessert, you know, we have this thing. Just about every time we go out to dinner with the folks, we, we go out and get dessert afterwards. Right. And so, indeed, we did. And, and last time they were here, I took them to this place called the Little Man Ice Cream Shop, which is like the Willy Wonka of ice cream shops. There's pulleys and cables and ice cream zipping around all over the ceiling is going by and, you know, bubbling machines that don't do anything and this machine over here that has a little zap you know, oh Tesla i love stuff like that that's great stuff like that were there were there and was it run by a little like peter dinklage looking guy or no would it be great if it was yeah, yeah no there's no little man i don't we've never seen a little man there okay. but maybe there is somewhere all right but instead we said oh we got another place we're going to take you it's called frozen matter and this is uh close to downtown it's an ice cream shop and uh you walk in typical ice cream shop right you've got your display case full of ice creams and and uh accoutrements and cones and things like that and then sure. off in the corner is the walk-in freezer mm. and uh you say oh i'd like to check out the walk-in freezer and she's yep go ahead and you go to the walk-in freezer and there's a light switch you flick the light switch and then you wait and you stand back the door opens the freezer door opens and a guy says, yeah, can I see your IDs? And you show him your IDs. And then he walks you back to a speakeasy that's what? hidden behind the ice cream shop. No way. That's awesome. Love and it. You, you basically walk through the walk-in freezer. You have to walk through freezer at that point. Sure. And, uh, and this place, and I sent you the menu from this place. I can't remember what the name of the, because the speakeasy does have a different name. Well, it says Bartender's Choice. Is that the name? That's no, the name. it's something like. Uh, spectral speakeasy or something like that. Oh, interesting. And um, uh, but the restaurant or the 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 bar is it's like the film sack of bars. <laughs> Every drink is named after a really bad movie. I love it. With complete with the logo from that really bad movie. So yeah, look, um, they were using fonts and everything, like the lawnmower yeah. man, the eraser head, right. uh, the brain right. dead, whatever. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, Bobby Ann had the Hollywood chainsaw hooker. <laughs> which was delicious. Uh, the Wicker Man is uh, an herbal floral uh, St. George uh, terroir gin. Um, Tell me that has lemon, honey, honey or something in it, right? It's got to have honey yep, in it. It's got honey, of course. Bees, oh. bees. Might have to be bees. Might have to be bees. Um, <laughs> and then on the wall, they've just got projected one garbage movie after another and it just keeps you know showing dumb movies it's like oh i don't know what this is i had to look it up but the movie that was playing last night while we were drinking was um let's see if i can find it it's agency of vengeance dark rising wow wow and it looked like something that we should watch for film sec it looked you know it's demons fighting but like teenagers fighting demons and uh uh it looked Get us on that list. That sounds like one for us. 
Yeah, I mean, we may it may there you know there are things that are just too bad for film sack, and this might be one of them. <laughs> but if you even pull up the movie poster, you'll see what it's trying to be. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so we had our drinks there, and then came back and uh, and crashed for the night. But it was um, it was a great evening. It was a lot of fun. And uh, those guys are great. Really I miss seeing them. I'm jealous. I I can't. Yeah. I couldn't have been there. I'd love to see those guys. Barry I'm glad and I they're wore so their matching... daughter their daughter's going back from. Or no, she's doing a semester near home or something, right? Something like that. Uh, yeah. Well, she's she goes to college here at uh, in Fort Collins up at uh, CSU. Yeah. And this was a just a visiting her trip as opposed to oh, a, okay. a um, taking her there, or bringing her back. But gotcha. they'll be back in the fall, and uh, that's great. We'll see them again when they pass through again. Yeah. Heck yeah. Go get some more yeah. chicken legs but, uh, mixed with uh, ostrich nuts or whatever you do. <laughs> Right. But Barry and I wore our matching "Hey Girl" uh, oh, nice. t-shirts from that uh, TMS play date. <laughs> with the draw, the t-shirt drawing game. Did you plan to wear them? Did you? Was it? A, yes. Oh. Well, he told me he was wearing his, and so I surprised him and wore mine today. Oh, you're like a couple of schoolgirls. I love this. This is awesome. like a couple of schoolgirls. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, anyway. Barry and Bobby and I hope you had a safe trip the rest of your way. Did they drive or fly, or what was their deal? They flew, but they're driving to the airport right now, so I'm sure they're listening to you uh, talk about them right now. Well, here to you us, go. To us talk about them. Here you go, Barry. Barry. All right, enjoy. Jill. What, do I have a Jill? Good, I don't have a Bobby Ann clip, or I'd play it. Right. Uh, maybe I do. You have a Bobby clip? Let's see. I got Bobby? I got sure, a... you've got a Hank Hill Bobby clip. Okay, that's not it. Bob is hungry. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but I never get to bond with Bobby on account of he's not good at much. Yeah, but it's a he reference. Yeah. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I should like to welcome you. That's Bob Barker. <laughs> that's Bob Hope. I mean it, Bob. Okay, I can't find a good one. <laughs> I have a lot of Bob. Oh, wait, here we go. Wake up, Bobby. There you go. Wake up, There you go. Wake up, Bobby. It's time to get on the road. I'm full of of octopus and chicken legs. All right. Uh, We're going to, what are we going to do now? We're going to call Brian Dunaway, uh, talk to him, play a little game, Mm -hmm. win some prizes for uh, contestants, all that stuff. Uh, you guys Fabulous gonna, Royalius. You guys are going to want to call us. 801-471-0462 is the number. And uh, if you call in, you can participate and be a potential winner today in today's edition of Babel Royale, which begins now. Welcome to Babel Royale, a twice-weekly thing we do on TMS to try to win some prizes for a listener and have some fun with our good pal Brian Dunaway, who's on the phone right now. Hi, Brian. Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hi. How hi, Brian. the heck are, are we you? here to have fun or what? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you at work right Settle now? Down. Are you Settle down, at- Johnson. Are you at work? You're at work, right? Yeah. Why, why, why would you want, where else would I be? I'm trying to, do- I'm trying to dox you. <laughs> you got to let me dox it's you. Freaking, it's a freaking Monday and it's not even a holiday. Uh, of course I'm at work. Yeah, you're at work. You're a work man. On my lunch break. Yeah. Need not worry anyone. Yeah. I take my lunch break from about 11.30, eight minutes ago until 12.30. Oh, very nice. Well, I'm glad that we destroy your entire lunch break with this silly nah. game. Uh, we nah. have a- what else am I going to do? <laughs> I just eat a sandwich and uh, I wait for you guys to call. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good life. I'm happy mm-hmm. to hear it. We have a listener on it's the line life. who is going to participate <laughs> with us. They've been holding very patiently. Let's find out who it is. Hi, good morning. Who's this? Hey, it's Stephanie. 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 <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> from up north in Madison, Milwaukee, yep. Mad- Madison, Ma- Madison, Wisconsin. No, yes, yes. no, you're dodging me. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do your street address and zip next, but we'll we'll save that for a different day. Scott's the worst at dox. I am the worst. Man. I do it accidentally that's, that's all the for time. For the blackmail. There you go. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's good go. to good to have you here, and we're happy to to be playing with you again. And uh, we're going to do that uh, shortly. But Brian, first, you must explain these rules and tell Stephanie what she might win. Well, okay, uh, Stephanie, I'm going to be giving Scott and Brian a topic. They're going to go back and forth giving me answers that fit that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, it's going to come up a lot. A repeated answer, or it takes too long to come up with an answer, that'll happen too. The win will go to the other player. Your job is to predict who's going to come out on top based on the topic. Today, you are playing for a prize package from Scott, including a Mad Max mystery figurine. Mad Ooh. Max figurine road uh, a frog pants print pack and a deck of scott johnson 
naked playing Ooh. cards. Oh, I guess just regular playing cards. Just regular old ass playing cards with oh. naked people in them. So it'll be fine. <laughs> but you can choose to be naked or not. I'm oh, yeah. confused how you play what them. is naked. Yeah, how you play them is completely entirely up to you. Exactly. Yeah. Completely up to you. If you strip poker, go fish, I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. But they work for all of those games. <laughs> yeah. Well, you better sh- make sure you get that right before you end up at a kid's game. That's right. <laughs> There's the strip <laughs> go fish. Don't do that. Two, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, all right, right. Learn making sure your you're clear. lesson. Uh, awesome. All right, your topic. Go fish, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back in 1965, we started teaching small children how to perform surgery. Oh. And uh, that was because of a game called Operation and Operation. a dude called Cavity Sam who laid on the table and you had to pull little pieces out of his body uh, without, uh, without touching the metal with the little picker-uppers or his nose would light up. I didn't know he had a name. He was, it would do more than just light up. The whole thing yeah. would shake. And vibrate yeah. and and uh, uh, that noise is just horrible. Yeah. No. Um, there are uh, 13, as of 2003 or 2004, 13, the average one, 13 different th- uh, parts of Cavity Sam that you can remove. I want to know how many of those you can name. <laughs> this isn't, you're right. This is an insane topic. <laughs> um, I came up with this like you know half an hour before the show thinking yeah. oh this would be a fun one Yeah, this uh, is going to be a really good one I'm really interested in this but if I remember correctly it was like it wasn't just like straight up stuff so how, how right, close exactly. do we have to be I will like... be I will be generous because because I have to be generous so right uh, right okay. if you can describe the piece or even tell me what part of the body it came from then uh, right then that I might get, be enough. But... I'll give you, a, give you a, a description without going into the, well, in yes. the body. So, like, sure. if I was to say, you know, like, remove a head of hair, it might be called curly cues or something. Right, on exactly. His head. So, as long had, as, okay, they, okay. All right, they had all right. silly names. Yep, exactly. Okay. As, right. as Guacmar says, they were full of idioms. Just uh, like now this you show. go. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> Yeah, this show is full of idioms, but it's spelled different. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So, Stephanie, hearing the topic, who do you feel good about uh, on this one? And who do you want to go first? If I fake an Irish accent and pretend to be Claire Gack, can I win either way? <laughs> you know what I'm going nice. to call that? That's calling out Brian Ibbett for being soft on Claire Gack that one. Day. It is. That it was. totally is. Yeah. Deserved. Uh, Deserved. <laughs> I don't know. Can you do uh, a good I accent? Try. Not not that, not that he's going to do <laughs> it, but can you do a good accent? Like I want to kind of hear. Oh yeah, oh, really? Weird. Before we even make any decisions uh, on it. Oh, 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 oh that's amazing! Know. You did it. You nailed <laughs> wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't get those it. away for I free, man. It. Get something <laughs> in return. It's a Jeez. Irish person giving birth. It sounds like I think. <laughs> Listen, is that you? T- is that you carrying your gold away? Is that? Yeah, that's what the Irish do. Yeah. They carry their gold away. <laughs> Pot of gold. Take away my lucky charms. Mm. All right. All well, right. Anyway, uh, who do you want to go first? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I definitely think uh, Dunaway is um, just looking more confident. So I will say he wins, and I guess I will have Scott go first. All right. Okay. I like right. this plan. Um, and you're right to assume I have less confidence in this because I didn't even know the guy had a name. Cavity, what is oh, it? Oh, yeah. Cavity, Cavity Sam. Yeah. Cavity that's Sam. a, and it's, Sam. it's not like, it's funny. It's his name that's been given to him over the years or, or, or whatever. I don't think it's even in the instructions or on the box that he's, Interesting. that he's, his name is Cavity Sam, but it's so like his unofficial name. There's a, a fun fact, by the way, the yeah. guy who created it, um, what was his name? Uh, Marvin Glass sold the rights. Uh, no, I'm sorry. John Spinello, who created the game, University of Illinois, industrial design student, sold his rights to the game to uh, Marvin Glass, Milton Bradley for $500 uh. and just recently could not afford an operation of his own. And, oh, uh, irony. Uh, but you, surely, but a, that uh, game was old as dirt. How is this guy's got to be like 120, right? How is he? How is this thing? It's not that old. Created in '65. I mean, really? I thought it yeah. was earlier than that. Okay. Yeah, no. It's pretty cool. Um, by by time standards, pretty new. All right, I'll, I'm yeah. gonna start with. Uh, well, hold on. They, yeah, but, the commercial, the lady, the don't the, the don't kid. try to overthink it. No, I have to because <laughs> I don't know what else to do. They they say something about a 
Don't touch his funny bone. So so funny. There bone you go. It. That's that is actually one of the ones he always did in the commercial. Yeah, but they're not. But, the, but if you're not to touch the funny bone, then that's not the, something you're going to remove. Then, right? Don't you're touch his too funny. Hard. Don't Just touch his funny it, bone. You're thinking too hard. Is it his funny bone? It is his funny bone. Yeah, it is a weird. It is a weird thing in the commercial, right? Because they do say, "Don't touch his funny bone." Yeah. Or maybe we're remembering it differently. Oh, it no! Maybe I remember funny bone yeah. definitely being in the commercial because well, I remember funny going. bone was in the commercial, but did they say, "Don't touch his funny bone"? Mm, I'm gonna find the commercial. Why would they say that they, when that's I completely the said, opposite yeah, of the way no, the game is played? Just say, yeah. be that's be why careful, I'm asking. Don't touch the sides or something like that. Yes. But this is Try the new game Monopoly. Make sure you go to jail. Spend as much time as you can in jail. That's why I ask. Is, my property. Uh, I know the mom comes down and says, may I play and all that. Well, here, right. here. I got, here's some audio. All right, let's, let's, hear, hear, let's hear this together. <laughs> it's my turn to operate. Operate? <laughs> well, hold on. Are you going to see names of parts? Oh, uh, ooh, that's a good oh, question. I better, I, I'll pause ooh. it. I don't want to see names of parts. <laughs> ooh, that's a, ooh. Here, ooh. I'll, you know what? I'll hide the tab. Let me do this. Oh, I'm feeling okay. a little bit. Uh... Here, I'm gonna hide the tab and not look anywhere near, even even though I can't see it. Here we go. Do you have butterfingers? <laughs> Why are they British kids? Is this British kids? Oh, yes, yeah, it's British Operation kids. the Mad Your Doctor's heart? Game. <laughs> take out his spirit mm -hmm. to 100. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. Yes. Take out All right, you, right. you can't. Never out. mind. Oh, I didn't realize they were gonna say a bunch of names. It's out. It's gone. What'd you think they were gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. Like I win no matter what. <laughs> It's so actually. All right, so spare ribs we can't use because I just. What? Of course just, we can. He just my said it. Spare ribs. The kid just said. It's it. not my fault you played it. Yeah. It's I not know. my fault you gave the answer away. Well, spare ribs. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not. You can't it's not your take turn it. yet. Wait, It'll did I say? Stay. Did I say funny bone? And did that count? Yeah, funny bone counted. You got the right. you got the first point. Yes. Right. Uh, <laughs> I am getting. You know, why not? I'm gonna allow spare ribs because what the hell is Scott <laughs> doing playing video? That's your own dumb fault. Of that yeah, during the show. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to hear how he says the funny bone. I didn't know they they made we'll, references. We'll we'll pull up the commercial afterwards. Somebody uh, work on finding the like the timestamp of "Don't touch his funny bone" if yeah. you can, and then we'll yeah we'll play and that also, after. Also, I don't after. think were, I, there's that was a British version of the commercial. I don't think it's the same one we used to see. So I don't know. But anyway, all right, no, um, definitely wasn't. Yeah. Uh, let's do. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure they took his heart out, right? Hmm. They did. did. They? Yeah, okay. um, I'll give that to you. Uh, it was a yeah. broken heart. It was heart shaped oh. with a crack going through it. Because mm. it's clever. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, the term "broken heart" refers to an emotional feeling in which someone is very sad, or a reason such as a breakup with a romantic partner. Oh. Thank you for no. explaining that. Oh, who do you think uh, uh, Sam was going out with that broke his heart? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it was somebody who was obviously very disappointed by his lack of genitalia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. That's right. He didn't have a unit. <laughs> He's naked on the on the operating table, and there's <laughs> there's no peen peen. Hey, Dunaway, no, exactly. don't say penis because it's not there. And he's got a really bad haircut. Yeah. <laughs> well, besides the funny bone, which I always went for first, I always went, always went for the horse. Mm -hmm. And uh, the horse. Yeah, the horse. There's a horse because mm -hmm. it w it was so freaky because it was so skinny across the middle. It was yeah. so weird. Yep. <laughs> Did Stephanie uh, just say, of course, after we said a horse? <laughs> of course this horse, yes. Th that's yes, horse. the Charlie Bonus horse. Points. A small Charlie horse, horse. Um, that makes sense. resting near the hip joint, a uh, sudden spasm in the leg or foot that can be cured by massage or stretching. Okay. I would have never known what the crap that was when I was a kid, though. Charlie horse? What is that? Charlie horse. Now, this now it makes me, me laugh. This reminds me of that two-point hospital game I've been playing recently where um, all the stuff like you've, uh, your patients have. It's basically like a hospital tycoon game. But the, right. the illnesses are like lightheadedness, but it's dudes with light bulbs in their head and their yeah, necks. of course. Can right. you play? So the, can you play the commercial after we uh, after <laughs> yeah. do yours? I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, yeah. All right. Let's do. Uh, I'm just trying to look at him. He looks so distressed on that table. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't think he was under any sort of anesthesia. I think he was just clearly like, not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's do. But he did. Um, he did seem to be like a bit of a. Wait, lush, are you looking though. at a picture of him with like all the cutaway holes of where? No, no. I just. Okay. Can, okay. I just oh, you're visualizing. Picture. Okay. Yeah. 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 Picture of him, man. <laughs> but I remember him being such a lush though with that big old red nose. Yeah, I know. He's yeah. a drinker. Yeah. Well, the nose Had was part of the indicator, right? It would buzz when the you nose was. Yeah, light up and buzz up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I remember thinking. I mean, here we go. Yeah. We're going to electrocute kids into being surgeons, really, is what it I is. really wish it would have really electrocuted you a little bit. I mean, it scared <laughs> you because it vibrated, but man. Yeah, it was, it was an implied electrocution because of the, the feeling yeah. of your tweezers picking up parts yeah. and touching that <clears throat> thing. Yeah. Um, Do you have a little, uh, I have a memory of the toy having a little plastic uh, wishbone. Do you have a wishbone? Uh, yeah. Say, yeah. say wishbone. wishbone. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it is a wishbone, similar to that of a chicken, located on the left side of the chest. The uh, the first furcula, furcula, which is a bone found in the uh, in birds and other animals. We don't have one, right? Humans don't. We don't have a wishbone. No. Okay. no. Do we have a wishbone? I don't know. That I don't know. Did you just ask did, if we have a wishbone? Yeah. Did, did, you, did you ever watch uh, Hannibal Lecter? Like, did he ever say, Clarice, <laughs> let's make a wish? <laughs> I always keep it, and I let it dry out overnight, and now let's pull it apart. <laughs> okay. No. The other one I always went for was the bread basket. Ah, the you know, bread basket. Always, yep. They had a nice little handle. It was all kind of large, and we were always going for the easy stuff first. Yeah. It's a slice of bread with a small notch taken out of the top uh, so that you had actually a place to grip it. Uh, it's a slang term for the stomach, the bread basket. Yes. I actually knew what that one meant. Okay, well, well I, yeah, I would hope so. I don't actually, okay. I think I'm out, but I'm going to go ahead and try. Okay. And just say uh, Ankle bone. something in his hand. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I don't, is that too vague? <laughs> I, boy. <laughs> like it's, uh, is it metacarpal you, or is it, uh, is it metacarpal? How do, you, how do you feel, Brian? Do you have more? Because I'll give it to oh, you yeah. if you feel like you've got <laughs> I mean, it's no, I'm almost out. We're, we're, in the we're already, you know, we've already crossed the line of. Uh, of <laughs> I'm just Jimmy's calling him. this a flawed premise right now. Right, point. right. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm gonna hand. give it to you. Writer's cramp. Um, oh, okay. So there's a pencil. Oh, so now we're just vague areas. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> a pencil in the forearm. Uh, of course, the writer's cramp soreness in the wrist. Oh, okay. Oh, I remember by, that uh, pencil. That's right. Yeah. There was a pencil in the forearm. Yeah. I didn't understand that though. Easy writer's to pick cramp. up too. Easy to pick up. Yeah, that was one of the. That was usually one of the first ones we would go for. Um, yep. All right. It's up to you now. Mm, now I'm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did I already say it? Ooh, I can't remember if I already said it or not. Oh. No, I think Scott said. Scott said wishbone. He asked him about it. So he. We, yeah. You did. I don't. I'm pretty sure we didn't say. Butterflies in the stomach. Oh, we did not. What? Butterflies sure in the fun. stomach. Yep. Wait, is that an a large butterfly part? in the middle of the torso. You'll notice that all the ones that I'm going for are the ones that I, that were the easy ones. Right, because you could pick it up by the antenna really, yeah. really easily. Yeah. Yes. So wait a minute. Was that embedded in the bread basket? Are they adjacent to each other? No. No, they were just in different places. Okay. The, the butterfly was actually a little bit higher. Don't you remember in the how chest. fat this guy was? He was pretty yeah. big. <laughs> yeah. He, he was, was a lush man. <clears throat> yeah, his big red nose, and he looked stressed. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, well, you would too if you were going under operation. Yeah, you're was not his wrong. eyes? I don't remember. Were his eyes open or were they closed? They were open, dude. That I, open? I remember that. Yeah, they wide open like a big. Whoa. The, the, the angry eyebrows to him, looking at him right now. Super angry oh. eyebrows. Yeah. yeah. Was there eyes that you could pluck out? It's like surgery oh, under surgery. duress. He was not into it. <laughs> um, all right, I, I'm, I'm out. The oh. electro probe. Uh, <laughs> His brain, probably, right? Oh, like a brain. Yeah, that's a good one. Some yeah. Sort of brain unit. Well, brain surgery. Yeah. Like well, good as a matter of fact, in 2004, uh, Milton Bradley said, hey, we're going to add a new part to Cavity nice. Sam. And so they had a, gave the ch fans a chance to vote on what, what, uh, um, what part they wanted added. And they added brain freeze. Oh, so it's, oh, an, ice, brain it's brain. an ice cream cone at, uh, located in the brain. Okay. And, uh, it was an ice cream cone. I was yeah, just guessing like cone. zones here. I, I, I yeah, got that's it. modern. That's 2004. So unless you bought this for the kids, but that counts, right? That counts. It counts. Yeah, I'm giving okay. you brain. Yeah. All right, I'm giving you brain. Give me some Get brain. brain. You get brain. Listen, listen, Stephanie's already won. Yeah. So we, we, you know, <laughs> it was all we, we, She was. She had won after that Claire Gack impression. So since then. <laughs> 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 All right, Dunaway, let's see if you know any more, even though she's won. Well, I want to say, okay, so we did, Scott did the wrist, and earlier I said something about the foot, and I'm, it seemed like it was like something in the foot. It could be wrist, ankle, I don't know, something in the, I'm going to go with the, the, the ankle bone is connected to the leg bone. Good enough. Yeah, the ankle bone connected to the 
knee bone. This was um, mm. a different piece, right? Because it wasn't a little plastic piece. It was a rubber band that you oh, actually right. had to stretch between yes. a peg in the ankle and a peg in the knee without touching the uh, oh, right. uh, Oh, my the gosh. Sides. I forgot about that one. We never had that one in there. Well. Who's yeah, gonna was, the, who's going to keep up with the rubber band? Yeah. Like that and the pencil were usually the first things to, to get lost because you couldn't right. just use any rubber band for that. <laughs> no, it had to be uh, it had to be the had right be the right length. Yeah, right. It had to be from your braces style mm. to be short enough. Yeah, those little rubber. Exactly. Yeah, your little rubber band braces things. My kid yep. used to have. Uh, there are only three left. Wow. I'm, well, should I'm we try kind to guess impressed. them? Let's try to guess them. Okay. Even though she's well, alone. Are, are you out, Scott? Is that it? Is that game over? Well, I'll just. Okay. I'll guess one. Guess I'll I guess one, saying. and you tell me if I'm wrong here. Uh, there you go. Uh, what, what part of the body have we not talked about? Uh, t t some kind of foot unit deal. Foot unit. T foot toe, unit deal. Toes or something. Kind Ooh, of down stub there. toe. <sighs> Ooh, like a bunch, a big old crunchy stub toe. That would be awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah, there's a uh, wrenched ankle. So, a um, wrenched ankle. That's his another other, ankle. In his other foot, besides the uh, the the knee bone, ankle bone thing, the other one has a wrench. I would have never guessed that. It's stuck in the right ankle. And, right. Uh, so it's actually a little it's wrench, a like a little wrench shape. That much. Yeah. Little wrench bone looking thing. In, in wrench, England, wrench they call it a spanner. To the <laughs> knee spanner. bone. Nice. Yeah, they do call it a spanner over there. Yeah. It's which confusing. I know. Right, do what? they call it a spannered ankle? <laughs> I don't know. Like, how does that work? Yeah. In, uh, Ingle. Well, I only have one more. Okay. And All you right. said there's how many left? Three more? There's two left, so... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> I don't remember what it was called, but it was something... Adam's rib or something like that. Is this? It was. I don't know. I'm sure it's something clever. I'm trying oh, to think. it's probably uh, an Adam's like apple. Spare also, rib, maybe, or barbecue ribs, or. Well, we did uh, spare ribs already. That was already. Yeah, right. spare ribs. Yeah. Play on the Adam. Adam. Oh, a Adam's apple. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That makes sense. Duh. Of course. There's like a little apple yes. in there. There's an oh, apple. So there, in and there's still one more left. What else did we not there's do? Still one more. Uh, I'll tell you the part of the body if you want it. Or do you have a guess, uh, yeah. Scott? I guess it is Scott's turn to guess technically. Um, it's a rectum where there's a giant. Oh, holy dear, damn near <laughs> rectum. Right, pull the rectum, damn near killed him. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have no idea. I can't think of what else. What part of the body have we not done? They've all been covered. There's a pail of water uh, in the leg in his, above the red, wrenched ankle. <laughs> Okay. Is a pillow of water above his wrenched ankle? Yep, it's water on the knee. Water oh, on the knee, geez. of course. Water on the knee. That is so dumb. <laughs> is it though? Could you come up with better things for the body? No. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Could be. Maybe. Um, Apparently, there's a mobile. Somebody was saying there's a mobile version of the game. Well, that makes perfect sense. What does that? What does that do? Flash the camera at you or something? Would. What's, yeah, what's gonna, how, what's gonna, how do you what's play gonna the you? They'll make you noise. Just, and, you just pinch and zoom to vibration. get close in, and then pick it up. Yeah, and your phone, your phone does, it does haptics. Yeah, but it does. doesn't, it doesn't do that stress-inducing vibration. No, no, like the operation game. When I was younger, I thought that game actually electrocuted you. I thought that was the whole idea. Well, it did too, because yeah. it was like, Arr! and it probably did if you weren't careful. If you did something, yeah. Wrong. I mean, nothing shook more than that, other than the uh, the football game. Where you put all the pieces and you just oh, turn yeah. the vibration on and they just wiggle wherever they yes. want to. Oh, love that. Love that game. Yeah. And Early quarterback form. would always fall over. Yeah. Yeah. Punk. Early, I had a hockey version of that. I love that stuff. It was stupid yeah. toys, but man, it's what, what we had. sacked. It's what we had. Uh, all, all right. right well, so in our yeah. in our Discord chat, by the way, is the um the commercial? 30 second commercial. Might okay. be in there. The Don't Touch oh, cool. is Funny Bone. Let's find out. Here we go. I mean, this is a newer commercial. This is not the one I saw when I was a kid. No. But, but still, that's okay. Let's see what we get. Yeah. Here. Doctor, my belly aches. You got butterflies in your stomach. <laughs> you gotta tell me, horse. Operation. A broken heart, of course. Operation. The whitest crime is true. Operation. I'm the doctor for you. Operation. Remove the pieces and collect your fee, but don't touch the sides. <laughs> Dang it, don't touch the I, sides. Is that what they always said? Yeah, don't touch the sides. Yeah, don't touch the sides. Yeah. That's what I said earlier. Uh, I didn't maybe, it, maybe it's get his funny bone. Don't touch the sides. Don't touch like the sides. That's what the kids know. would say at each other. I said, don't touch the sides. I oh, J.C. J. J. Calhoun posted old commercial with American voices instead of UK voices. All right, let's uh, do that. Discord if you want that one. We're by, by the way, I have no recollection. We obviously played this game very specifically for the, you know, the scare of it. 
and didn't yeah. play by the rules because it says collect the fee. Was yeah, there for each, yeah, for involved? each piece you take out. So you draw a card and it tells you what right. piece to take out and each piece is worth a different amount. So the harder pieces like um, the Charlie Horse, the Funny Bone are worth $200. The brain is now worth six hundred dollars. The bread basket is a thousand dollars, but the easy yeah. ones like the the pencil writer's cram. Did like anyone? Did any of you kids? Did any of you kids play that proper? Because never I never played, played it proper. No, no, it was always just like I'm gonna get this one. I'm gonna yeah, get this one. No, I'm, Don't pretty, I, I'm pretty that's sure we rarely had the pieces. They were lost all the time. Like, I mean, sometimes yeah. I just put the box between my legs and, and <laughs> put the probe right on the on the broken heart and just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. All right, I'm going to play this commercial. <laughs> We're going to hear it finally and forever. Here we go. Here she comes. It's my turn to operate. Operate? Butterfingers. <laughs> it's Operation, the Wacky Doctor's Here's Game. The battery's not That's in here, remember. Take out his spirits for $100. <laughs> oh, you'll never do that. Don't touch the side. Uh, here goes his funny bone. Yeah. It takes a very good. Go. Here right. goes his funny bone. Yeah, we gotta hear her say, "May I play?" Let me get to that. Part. I did it. That's two hundred dollars for me. May I play? Operation. <laughs> what That's weirdo right. parent does that? Nobody comes down and says, <laughs> "No, mother, may I? You may not." May I play with your kids? Get out of here, mom. <laughs> These are my friends. You're embarrassing exactly. me. Yeah. Get All your right. own damn. You can afford it. Well, you know what this means, everybody? It means this. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Stephanie, you're once again, I know this has happened before, but you're once again a winner here on the show. How does, yeah. that, how does that feel? Oh, oh, oh you, for, you you remembered me. Yeah, you're here. You're, <laughs> you're always here. Always with Who us. Did? I was like, how many commercials are they going to play? <laughs> <laughs> All of them is the answer. Hey, well, they sound until terrible we find the over right the phone. One. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, the, the important thing is we need uh, to send these this stuff. So send me an email, scottofrogpants.com. I'll get you your physical winnings. Some way of Ooh. saying that, I suppose. Mm. And uh, congratulations and well played. Oh, that hung up on it. And remember, don't touch this. Oh, too late. Yeah, don't touch oh. the sides. All right. I always thought it was don't touch his funny bone. Why did I, I did it too? It's when really? you said that. Yeah. That's, I remember don't that's touch definitely the sides. a Mandel. I mean, it wouldn't. It doesn't make sense, obviously, because why right. would you tell, why would you describe the game in a way that's not the way it's played? But. Right. Well, we've also learned something today, right. which is that that is, that is a dubbed version of a British commercial. So the British commercial wasn't dubbed. <laughs> And it's the exact same oh, people. Really, really interesting. And it's dubbed so over with visuals. English, or not English. It's okay. English, or sorry, American accent dub version of an English commercial. American English versus. That's really weird. Huh? What a weird. Make thing. sure to remove his fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> or take out the lorry. I can't. I don't know why you'll have to go up here. <laughs> I'd do Philip if I didn't feel bad about Philip dying. So I'll right, hold yeah. off on doing Philip. Uh, all right. Hey, Brian. We didn't Dunaway. cause that one, people. No, that wasn't us. We didn't do it. Uh, hey, uh, or maybe re relentlessly over and over saying that name eventually killed him. I don't know. <laughs> but Dunaway and uh, I do a video game show. It's on Tuesdays. So tomorrow at 3.30 Mountain Time, you'll be able to watch The Boop Show. And I think I finally yeah. settled on what game I'm going to talk about. I went through a few uh, this week to try to see oh. what would fit. And uh, settled Good. on one that I really like. So you'll have to wait and find out what it is. Brian, anything else you'd like to add? You won't have to wait for me to tell you. I'll be playing it tonight at 5.30 Eastern Time. I'll be playing Wildfire Part 2 of my Boop Show homework. Mm -hmm. uh, last time, the developer stopped by and gave us some tips. That was a lot of fun. And I'll talk more about that when we do the Boop Show tomorrow night on just, Tuesday. Sorry, I just realized while I'm looking at Sam, the operation guy, his belly is... Uh, specifically covering his junk that's what's happening yes oh yeah, absolutely yeah that's yeah. always what's weird about it. it's like he's naked but he's not naked no right exactly but he's yeah. mo he's basically mo look at that hair he's mo <laughs> he is oh, mo that's right he did have that he did have that mo shimp or whatever hair the, the yeah. Really yeah. high cut yeah i guess it was actually larry right because mo was Oh Wait. no no! What Mo was the one with the hair? Mo had that bad Larry hair. Was, yeah. Larry hey, was Mo. curly, right? Or Mer Mer ironically, Larry had curly hair, and then curly had Larry no had hair. hair, right? Yeah. Right. Which I guess was the joke. <laughs> well That's done, nineteen twenties or thirties, whatever you were. All right, hey Brian, kiss our butts, bye. All right, he's gone. Uh, we're gonna take. When is, a, by oh. the way, speaking of boop and games and stuff, when is that Dorf Romantic? What is? Is that what it's called? Or, oh, that's uh, out now. Or when's it coming to mobile? Or uh, when's it coming to mobile or Mac or something? Because I don't want to. I yeah. could do it via. It's awesome. It, I it needs to be 
Yeah. That needs to be I can on... probably play it via Steam Link on my Mac, but I want I want it on mobile. Yeah, that game deserves to be a touchscreen version. It's really cool. I think it will. They're having massive success, so I think they're going to... Seems like it, and it's really early on, so... Yeah, it's a great game. Uh, all right, watch for that, and then for now, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, our old buddy Bill Duran's joining us. we got a big question for him, and one that kind of applies to me as well. Uh, and Brian, really, uh, all of us. Anybody who has to work out rates for like commissions or side contract work or whatever, oh. if you're interested in that kind of discussion, that's coming up next with him. And then, of course, after that, Stephen Schleicher will be joining us as well. Uh, between all of that, we need a song. So, Brian, will you provide said song? Yes, we're going to go to Brooklyn for this one. A woman named Sarah Cicero has released her debut EP called Cold Immaculate Opposite. And it uh, came out Friday. Um, really good stuff. I listened to it on repeat all weekend long. And um, the big single from the uh, EP is called Indifferent. Hope you like it. I like it. It's Sarah Cicero. Here is Indifferent. Things have been getting out of hand, and we need you to mend a few broken pipes. I've heard you're a bit tasty. No messing around, or you get a slap. <laughs> This is the morning stream, and I feel fine. I feel fine also. Welcome back to the show, everybody, where we all feel fine. Mm -hmm. uh, feel oh, that song again? Yeah, who, who's oh, that? Oh, yes, yeah, Sarah Cicero, and the song is called Indifferent. The brand new EP, EP is called Cold Immaculate Opposite. Nice! Yes. All right. It's very good. It's very, very good. It sounds very good. Let's get Bill Duran in here. Uh, is that working? It is. And uh, we'll talk to him right after I push this button. Your bat cave's open there, Bill. It's Bill Duran joining us from the Pacific Northwest, home of PunishProps.com, the fantastic YouTube channel, and physical premises where all kinds of rad stuff gets made. We talk about making things with Bill, and he comes on Tuesdays, or Bill, no, Mondays. Hi, Bill. Good morning. Hello, this is your public service announcement, letting everyone know that Waterworld is on Netflix right now. Yeah. I watched it again last night, and it is still fantastic. Preach! You're one of my people. Yeah, yeah I get this uh, text from you last night with a big you know, picture of your TV showing, <laughs> look what I found. Um, it is it is about that time for my annual rewatch anyway, and now that it's on uh, Netflix in 4K, I believe. I, it uh, I think it's time I rewatched the magnificent, wonderful, much maligned, but forever always great Waterworld. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, it's Bill. Bill, uh, how are you? You doing all right? I mean, Waterworld's great, so you're probably doing great now. Oh, still riding that high. Yeah. 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 How do you get that out of your system? You can't. It'll be there for weeks. Uh, anyway, it's good to have you here. We're going to talk about a very interesting question we got regarding uh what bill does uh for a living and also i think in a lot of ways this will apply to brian and i like i said so i'm just going to read it this is from somebody named gondry i don't know why that sounds familiar gondry well there's the director uh, michelle gondry who did oh uh, that's what i'm thinking of um music videos and he does the he did uh um eternal sunshine of the spotless mind that's what's yeah. that's why it's familiar there's also that the place in middle earth you know, like the Horde of Gondry. Oh, one of my favorite artifacts. Mm. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> well. That might be, who knows, that might be more <laughs> where this person, if they, if it isn't their real name, where they got their name. Oh, more yeah, likely, now yeah. that you say that, that probably is. <laughs> it's probably exactly where it came from. Uh, yeah. So well done, Bill. We've sussed it out. Anyway, Gondry says this, uh, be he or uh, she or he, I don't know. How does Bill figure out what he would charge for co uh, commissions and special projects? For that matter, how does anyone do that? Says mm -hmm. Gondry. So a lot of people, I get this question all the time. Like, how do you know what to charge for book illustrations or uh, somebody's doing an article and they just want a cover piece and it'll only print once and it's only digital versus print? Or is it different if you do print? Like, I get that all the time. In the case of your stuff, Bill, and I know you don't, you know, you're, you're picky about what commissions you take because you have to mm -hmm. be time-wise. But um, when that does roll around, what kind of advice can you give to Gondry and others who might be trying to price their stuff out? Right. So... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I get uh, questions like this a lot as well. And the, the reason is because selling anything that's custom made, scratch built, anything like that, selling it to an individual client, especially if, you're, if it's your sole source of income, 
uh, is really hard. It's super difficult, right? So if you're struggling, you're not alone. It's really, really hard thing to do. It's maybe the hardest uh, part of all of it, to be honest. Absolutely, yeah. Part of it is um, what it is the client has in their head as an expectation is frequently different than what you, the artist, has in your head. Yeah. So a lot of um, the challenge with uh, making a custom commission is that process, figuring that out, the communication between you and the person who wants the thing. Uh, I did prop commissions for a while. Um, that was kind of my main focus from like uh, 2011 to 2015. So I did those for a while. Uh, and then I turned my focus to creating content. Turns out books are one size fits all. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I love selling books. Uh, I love selling videos. Um, and I also spend more of my time teaching people how to make stuff than uh, making stuff for them. Mm -hmm. Now, during the time that I was doing commission stuff, I don't think I ever charged enough uh, at all. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that... Uh, I probably came pretty close to breaking even over those like three or four years when I was taking commissions. Um, it's not to say I didn't charge a lot for my work, but I spent a ton of time on it. I spent yeah. so much time on it. Yeah. And the people frequently got something that was way better than what they paid for. And right. that's great for them. Sure. Not as good for me. No. <laughs> yeah, there's a middle ground because there's a, there is this there is the sense um, everybody always feels this way like you're going to overcharge or or you're going to lose the deal because you're going to you're going to basically right. come in so high that they're going to run mm -hmm. away. But I yeah. can't tell you how many times I've said like I had a VO thing, a really short VO thing here recently that I can't talk about because it was NDA. But I did a little short VO and they said, "Well, what do you what do you charge for that?" And I thought oh, I haven't done this in a while. I don't remember. And I'm like looking up online, like common rates and this and that. And so I came back with what I thought was outrageous. I said, $1,000. Right. And I thought they were going to go, ooh, can we go lower? Or, ooh, sorry, we can't do it. Or ooh, I really thought I was going to kill my deal. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Let's, look, let's get that on paper. And I found out later that they were used to doing four to eight grand for this sort of stuff. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. And I don't wow. know. How do you know? You don't know. Nobody yeah. knows. Yeah. This is this. So what you do? Here's a trick, Scott. You go. It's a thousand dollars, and if they go, fantastic. You go. Well, that's just the speaking fee. We got to talk about some of my other fees as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. uh, oh, I, did I say a thousand? I meant that's set up. Uh, set up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's so really frustrating. Set up my microphone. It's frustrating because they just, you know, you, you a lot of times you go in mm -hmm. blind. <clears throat> Lenonade in the chat just made a really good comment. He says commission work has no standard. It's really a confidence game. And in a lot of ways, I think there are some standards around the periphery, but in the for the most part, that's true. It's a matter of you having the confidence to say, all right, well, they're coming to me for these reasons. And it's all a little nebulous, but you kind of have to do the math in your head. It's like your value is more than just the hours and more than just the materials yeah. and more just yeah, more yeah, than just right. the combination or else they go anywhere. So why are they coming to you and what what is that value? You also don't want to screw people. Yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. it's still it's still even after all of that it's still like throwing darts you just not yep. sure if you're yeah, gonna yeah, hit the right mark or not. now there might not be standards but there is definitely gonna be depending on where you're working right um uh, but like for me in the prop game if a company came to me and said we want you to build a prop for our booth for uh e3 or <laughs> that's a bad example they're not doing a physical e3 you know remember <laughs> we used to do those things Oh yeah, and they yeah. had booths. Yeah, you mean they had booths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They had people that. and lines, yeah. and there was they, people would play video games one after the other, the same oh. controller and stuff. Yeah, I yeah. So, um, they there may be an industry, not necessarily a standard, but they may have an expectation. Yeah. Right. They may have done other work like that before, and I, uh, if I fall outside of their expectations, they're probably going to turn me down. Right. The, um, the the real takeaway, though, is that learning what to charge for your work and what to charge for your time is something that you, I, at least I've had to learn over and over again through lots of trial and error. Um, I, I, I have been underpaid more than I've been overpaid. <laughs> uh, so I've tried to learn from those experiences where I lowballed myself uh, on a job. Yeah. Um, there, there are a few obvious things when it comes to figuring out what you're, what to charge. So, like, 
your material costs. That's easy for me to figure out. I know how much silicone or plastic or foam or rubber. That's material costs are pretty easy to figure out, and they're really easy to justify to your client. You're like, look, I had to go buy all this stuff right. <laughs> to make your thing. Right. Um, but there are other things that vary from project to project, right? Even if um, you're an illustrator, if you're a digital illustrator like Scott is, and you mostly do your work by drawing in Photoshop or whatever, there's still things that are going to vary from time to time. Sure. Uh, processes might, certain processes might take a lot more time than others. So for example, with me, if I have to make a mold of the project, that's going to add a few days build. Right. And for what I charge, that means adding a couple, uh, a hundred or a thousand dollars to the, the project. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I don't, if I, if I decide in the middle of the project, I should make a mold of this, but I'm not going to charge the client anymore. Right. Then I do two days worth of work essentially for free. Mm-hmm. And the, the client gets a better product and they're super happy. But I just, just gave away two days of, of work. Yeah. Uh, and I, and if that, again, if it's your sole source of income, like it is for me, you can't do that. Right. Very, you can do that for a very short period of time before you just completely run out of money and you have to go get sure. a day job. Sure. Uh, so what process you use, what materials you use, some materials are more time consuming to work with than others. Um, and you may also have to pad your schedule and your estimate in case something goes wrong with the build. Something usually goes wrong with the build. <laughs> I'll tell you that yeah. when you're building a prototype, a complicated thing, something usually goes wrong. You got to build kind that of by you, by default when you're talking about physical materials. You um, there's no you know the the advantage I have in digital art is that I've got layers and non destructive you know mm-hmm. techniques that mean that if we're not happy with the way a color scheme worked or we're not happy with the way something happened in the composition, I can go and change that in a way that doesn't mean new molds. It doesn't mean new pores. It doesn't mean new materials. Mm -hmm. It just means time. In your case, you got to like, sometimes you got to throw shit away and start over not start over, but you know. Yeah. So molding is a great example. I was working on a project that where everything went wrong in the mold and it was, uh, it was a lot of silicone and it's really expensive. Uh, I poured a mold and the mold box leaked. So when I showed up the next morning, all of the silicone was w- had bled out onto the table oh, and floor no. and then cured that way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right? Uh-huh. So and you, you just throw it away. I'm like, well, that's $50 of silicone and half a day of work and uh, 24 hours of curing time that is, I just threw away. Ugh. Right? Ugh. Yeah. That, and, and those things are going to happen no matter how good mm-hmm. you are. Uh, so here, here's a trick. Here's one of the best things you can do if you're if you've got a couple of commissions under your belt, right? Right. After you've finished a project, or I'm sorry, during the project, track your time. It's a pain in the butt. I know. Track every mm-hmm. minute you spend working on that thing, so that you know exactly how many hours you spent on it. Right. Then once the project is done and delivered, you got paid. Subtract your material cost from that payment, and whatever's left, do the math. It's real easy. Figure out how much you were making per hour. Right. So, it's good like example. There's your baseline, and then you got to move up. Exactly. Baseline. Yeah. Let's say I spend a month working on a prop, and I charge two thousand dollars for it. Right. Now, people, let's say it's a let's say it's a rocket launcher. Okay. The so two thousand dollar rocket launcher. People are like that's a lot to pay for a fake rocket launcher right <laughs> and i agree that's a lot to pay. i've never paid that much for any any prop thing of course i make my own but you get the point right let's say the material cost was 300 all right that's 1700 bucks that you just quote made yeah however if it was a month and you were working 40 hour work weeks then you made about 1065 an hour mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. which might be perfect for you sure it, it's not for me i, I can't live on that uh, <laughs> right. So what I need to do is start thinking about things like, like you said, Scott. There's other charges you put in there that are, that are uh, uh, a little more ethereal. For example, if I really don't want to do a project, someone comes at me with a, a project like I don't want to, or I want you to build a thing and I don't want to build that thing. Yeah. I might want to build it for an extra thousand dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're or go. if the yeah. the this... client is a huge pain to work with. And I don't want to work with him, but I might want to work with him for a little more. You know what I mean? Like there are other ways to pad the, uh, the price to make the job more, 
more work more for you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but also, you might just say, I have to charge more because I don't make enough to eat. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so there are a lot of ways you can start fudging with the numbers and fudging with the uh, amount that you charge until it gets to a place that works for you. But it takes a lot of trial and error, and it is it can be pretty soul crushing for a while. <laughs> yeah, you can, and, the, and sometimes you 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 aim low, too low, and go, okay, I gotta go higher next time. And then the next time you get too high, and you're like, all right, I gotta mm -hmm. backtrack. Like there really is just a matter of like finding your sweet spot and then paying attention to trends in whatever world you're working in. If you're right, right. doing art commissions, then pay attention to what's happening around that space. There are tons of discussion groups about this very thing on Reddit and other places where you can kind of see what people are doing and you can see how it scales and what things have an effect on your price. Like for example, your notoriety as a, yeah. as a famous artist, if you're not Ian McHugh, you're not going to make Ian McHugh money. But if you're, you know, somewhere in the middle, you'll do all right. And if you're at the very bottom, you know what you have to do to kind of grow there. Like, right, exactly. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot. Go, there's a lot there. But uh, one thing I always also like to try to do is I'll try to not overestimate too much. But let's say something. We'll just use a number that's easy. Let's say something is two hundred dollars. Um, I might go three hundred because there's some unknowns, right? Something mm -hmm. could go weird. Something's funky. It's not too much higher, but it's enough where I can feel good about it. And then if things go well and super smooth and it was more like 200, then I will say to them, hey, this is we, we were able to get this done quicker than I thought or this has been faster than I expected or you were really easy to work with on proofs or whatever. Um, it, it, I'm knocked it down to 200. Now, the reason I do this is, A, that's that that's maybe the fairer price. You know, you're not ripping the guy off or charging for no reason but you're also building uh a relationship and a uh, sort of a track record there uh, oh yeah that says hey this this is somebody who you know is a straight shooter with me that lets me know um and then you know they're they're more likely to use you in future uh, when it comes to stuff like that so that's just another yeah, way yeah. of kind of protecting yourself but at the same time gives you some wiggle room to like come back with them and, and surprise them with a lower price or mm -hmm. you know yeah and it's way easier to do it that way than to be halfway through a commission where the client has paid a deposit already and then try to convince them that they need to actually pay you more that's right. way hard <laughs> right halfway through a project emailing a client be like look man this is taking twice as long yeah. and i'm gonna totally eat my shirt on this thing i gotta charge you more they might be like eh, i decided i don't want that thing anymore yeah. Right. <laughs> Hope your shirt tastes good. <laughs> you know, yep. Uh, uh, so yeah. a couple more just really quick things here. Uh, one of them, you want to be in a position as an artist, and this takes time, but you want to be in a, uh, in a position where you can turn down most of the commissions that you are offered. Um, you want to be in a position where you can be picky, both about the projects you do, who you work with, and what they're going to be charging. Mm -hmm. And that comes from delivering frequently on time and uh, at budget and gaining that notoriety and reputation that 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 takes years to to build up but that's definitely a position you want to be in yeah. like right now if people come to me with the commission idea i can just say no i have i, I have my own gig uh book selling is working well for me i don't have to say yes to commissions but if someone comes to me with a really cool project and a lot of money i could be like yeah sure okay i'll i'll, I'll give that a shot sure you know? but i but I can be picky. It is nice to get to a place where you can be picky. Yeah. And that yeah. takes a while. And it may sound like a luxury, but it's not because we all had to, we had to, we had to figure our way to get there. Like I get to be really picky about commissions now because I can, um, for somebody mm -hmm. who's just getting started and not feeling like they have that luxury, just keep at it. And then you'll get to a point where the bigger stuff pays longer term and you don't have to take the little ones that are harder or the people that are mm -hmm. cheap and weird or that make changes all the time like you can just be a little pickier about your destiny and that's a great that's a really nice phase to be in yeah it is it's super good yeah um takes, there, takes a i made a lot of anime that. swords that i was not interested in <laughs> i made a lot of anime <laughs> swords for cheap for a while yeah uh, before i could uh just make um the props i want to make uh, right. when i want to make them yeah, so so it's an, and it's a quick interesting distinction. Um, someone in the chat just asked. Lennon Aid in the chat says, "Do you think the success of this Rock Runners Kickstarter means that you undercharged?" No, this is a case where uh, not at all. Like I want 
the, I want it to be a low bore, low barrier of entry per person, like mm-hmm. per person wanting to get that game. My interest is not in overcharging them. I want to, if right. anything, undercharge them. My miscalculation on the Kickstarter was just how quickly it would happen, or that it would go as high as it's going. I thought it would. We started low because I had low expectations for just total volume. I just didn't think it would be that big a deal. Yeah. But we made it so it would scale. So I don't think this is a good comparison. Um, no. Yeah, and the about. goal is to get it into stores after the Kickstarter thing, so that you know, there's that's where you can start bilking the customers. Yeah, screw those, <laughs> screw them at retail, exactly. But but uh, and, you, yeah. and the big, I think the biggest distinction is that you aren't printing and stamping all those cards. Right, so that's right. getting done elsewhere. It's kind of like my books, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I can undercharge for my books. I can put them on a deal if I want because I'm not spending my time producing them. That's right. a huge distinction. Right. Yeah. And yeah. The, and the other thing is, you know, like uh, Lasarge says, well, it actually seems like kind of an expensive card game to me. Well, there's a lot of factors to that. Like, uh, you know, 30 for a for a card game may seem like a lot compared to what you could go buy some, you know, buy a deck of Uno cards for. But that's because they print 50 million decks of Uno cards every year. And and by the end of this, we might print 2000. <laughs> copies of rock runners so the volume matters you know there's law there's all sorts of factors and that's the thing that's hard about even this discussion is there's every single commission or every single deal you take including your own projects right even if it's just for you making content for your channel Mm -hmm. you still have to calculate the best you can and then you're going to find out later oh shoot there's this part i forgot about or there's this other thing that i didn't do or or, or the heat broke in the office. And right. Now it cost me twelve hundred dollars to fix it. Right. Yeah. Or when I shipped my playing cards two years ago, three years ago, whatever it was, um, I didn't know that 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 the then administration was going to put tariffs on Chinese goods and specifically, oh. specifically <laughs> printed playing cards. Like that's listed on the tariffs thing. Or oh I, God. I that, ordered that a bunch of. Me. We sell knives on our website, yeah. and we ordered three thousand of them from china a lot like it was a significant amount of money um and that was right when the tariff thing changed and when they got here for some reason this this is the amount i always have to spend it was another twelve hundred dollars before i could i had to pay yeah before i could get them they were here in the states i had to pay what another commission that i don't even understand and that that yeah we we could just go that'd be a whole podcast but see that's the thing right those are those are factors out of your control so you do your best to sort of plan for those things but then when they happen we just had to take in the shorts on a lot of it it's just the way it was so you end up just having to charge more for the product which is a bummer yeah that sucked i hated that that was lame and these are being by the way rock runners being printed in the u.s because i'm trying to that costs more just intrinsically more but Mm -hmm. i want to buffer against any weirdness internationally it's just a weird time don't want to mess with the, those factors I can't control. So we're doing this here on the ground. Very cool. Yeah. Which means it'll be really nice and I, I can talk English with people and that's good too. Nothing wrong with Chinese. Very cool language. Way to go Chinese. <laughs> but I don't want to talk to you. I don't know Chinese. I don't know Mandarin. Right. And your name's no way your name's Kevin. There's no way your real name is Kevin. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Boy, we, we went on. This, we, we went could, places. We talk about yeah. this forever. Holy yeah, cow. We really could. It's a it's an interesting subject. I'm um, really glad we had a chance to do it with you. Um, you also uh, often bring to the show not only content from your own channel and sites, but cool uh, other gigs that you admire and like. Anything this week you want to share? Yeah, this is really a good and relevant video. My friend David over at Make Something is the channel. He made a video called How to Price Your Work, and it's oh. really useful. Oh, look How at that. How appropriate. Yeah. Yep. It's almost like. We talked last night about the subject. <laughs> and I did the tiniest amount of prep work. Yeah. No, that's great. Uh, let's see. This is go over there and find to make something on on YouTube and he will uh he will go in depth about some of this stuff. That's that's fantastic. That guy looks yeah. like a pirate. He's cool. David Yar. Yar, yeah. look at me. I'll give you ideas about to charge for your work. Yar. <laughs> Uh, all right, Bill Duran, everybody. He is PunishedProps.com's own Bill Duran. He's Chimbeard on Twitter, and if you haven't subscribed to it on YouTube, you should. It's Punished Props. Bill, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. See you. See you, Bill. Bye now. All right. Good stuff. That is good stuff. I mean, I don't know how you came to your, I, and I don't even know what you charge, but for your computer things you're doing right now, like this little mm-hmm. side gig, yeah. Um, that how hard was that process to just sort of get what yeah, you wanted? Yeah, because, you know, basically I had to figure out, all right, how long does it take me to do one? Yeah. You know, and I kind of priced out like, all right, how much time am I spending on each machine? Because I can do two, three at a time. 
And um, luckily they they came to me with an offer while I was figuring my side out and said, oh, you know what? Actually, that's fair. That actually is, it probably ends up being more than I would have charged, but only by a little bit more than I would have, the price I would have come to. So that actually worked out, but that's such a different thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting game to play is the, it is kind of a game. There's a meta to it and there's like a, Mm -hmm. I don't know, you have to balance it. And it's, if you do it game. right, there's two winners. Yeah. I have this one. Oh, here's a tip. Here's a trick. It doesn't really yeah. m- make a giant difference on the bottom line. But if you, let's say you're an artist and you're trying to get somebody to commission something, you tell them that, and this is, it's true. You just, you tell them that, all right, well, the way this works is you don't have to pay me a dime uh, until I show you a, an initial rough sketch. Hmm. If you approve that, then great, we're in business, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll charge you up front, and then we'll get the rest of it done, get it inked and colored. And the av- advantage of that is it, it it broaches the conversation without the awkwardness of, I need you to pay up front. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. what you're saying is, I'm yeah. going to do this thing for you, which is a total sacrifice, which is I'm going to draw the whole thing out. You're going to have this sketch, which means I'm committed. I'm going. Let's go. I'm yeah. into your work. But you still have approval. You have refusal. If you don't want it, great. We'll move on from there. And it doesn't cost you a dime. That's just a service I provide. But if we're solid, then great. I'll ch- charge him. We're on our way. Like that has always worked really well for me as a way to both give them something they weren't expecting. Yeah. And also and, get money know, up and, front. <laughs> and really, and it does set the set the tone for the whole project to be able to say, if you don't like this already, then we're probably, you know, we're probably going to have um uh you know then maybe i'm not the right designer for you for this project and this gets you you know exactly you that's a great way i hadn't really it. thought of it in those words but that's exactly it like if i'm if yeah. this isn't, isn't going to be right you'll know right away and what am i out yep. not really that much time sketching it's not a big deal right. i right. can tell you that that's never turned into one of those but the opera but at least it says here i'm exposing myself in a way that says to them I am willing to do this part for free to make sure I'm what you want. And if you don't, we're cool. That act alone, I think, has kept the deal going. Even if there were changes oh, oh, sure. or even if they did want a completely different take or whatever, they 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 like that and they seem more willing. And I don't think it's a trick. It's just a it's a it's a tip. It's a it's a thing that has meaning that isn't gonna kill you to do it. I don't know. I like it. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's move on. Oh, we got to call Steven. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> you know. We could talk about this all day long, but uh, maybe we should just gonna let's start a saying. brand new show with our very unlimited schedule we have. Let's call it uh, <laughs> right, right. Business Dealings, frogpantsbusiness.com. So, one more thing to add to that yeah. that you guys didn't talk about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, don't forget that you're going to have times where you're very busy yeah. and times when there's no business going on. Oh, yeah. Sink so you have to of calculate for that yeah. as well. Or for feature sure. famine, yeah. yeah. It's always up or it's always down. There's no... Yep. There's yep. never... That's why people like desk jobs. Go in, clock in, clock out, go home, and it's just consistent, and the money's in there, and you just do whatever you do. Not in our lives. <laughs> it's, ah, it's, we're not making it. Okay, <laughs> whew, we did, a, we did okay. That'll carry us. Ah, like, it's like that. That's yep. the cadence. Oh, also yep. this. And also, don't forget Steven taxes. Schleicher. Steven Schleicher. Yeah. <laughs> Pay your taxes, but also stay hydrated, right? We'll save that for the end oh, of the yeah. segment. Oh, yeah. It's important. Stay hydra. Yeah. Stay, <laughs> stay hydra. Um, Feel right. hydrated. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> hey, it's Steven Schleicher joining us from Majorspoilers.com. Oh, hi, and, Scott. Hi, Brian. Uh, hi. And hi. Welcome to the show. I knew you'd have some thoughts, though. You always have good thoughts on this sort of stuff. We're all kind of growing on the same tree these days and uh why not share our ideas and tips many branches though many branches let's, many, let's many. make sure we uh stress that that's true no um okay before we get going here i just wanted to put it out there since we talk a lot about comics on this segment uh i'm caught up to what they've released anyway so far on disney or uh, sorry D- uh, dc infinite and uh the series uh uh the last god is just one of my favorite new things i cannot get okay. enough of this freaking thing yeah i love it um, it is like, it is, I think I mentioned this before, maybe not, but it's so much mm-hmm. like a really well crafted sort of D and D style, dark fantasy story. And quite literally like a group of people adventuring, you know, 
and and having encounters and stuff and it doesn't it doesn't feel like a tabletop game it feels like a wonderful story but i kept thinking right up through issue four or five i'm like man this would be this would be such a cool campaign in an actual role-playing game and then they did it like the fifth or sixth issue is a source book for nice. for for D and D fifth edition for this world and these characters and creatures and encounters and there here's their D- DC and this guy's got you know whatever power this and that and here's the custom rules a DM would have to do but the whole issue is a source book and then they get back to the story in the sixth issue and keep moving forward anyway cool. it's just I got co- freaking so, awesome a couple I love of things it. yeah so a couple of things if you're into traditional D and D and you want to read some D and D adventure type stuff IDW Publishing has been uh, doing D and D you know, adventure set in the, whatever the current uh, campaign is set um, from Wizards of the Coast. Jim Zub is the writer of that. Very, very good stuff there. Um, Rick and Morty uh, have delved into the Dungeons and Dragons over at Oni Press, and they also include character sheets and other things so you can play the characters that Rick and Morty and the rest do inside the world of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, Dark Horse Comics got into a deal with Stranger Things because they have the Stranger Things license. They have a whole um, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Stranger Things um, story. I think it's a four issue miniseries that um, that you can also play the characters that Will and the rest of the gang play in in the uh, in the TV show. And then finally, over at Image Comics, uh, Karen Gillan and I forget who the artist is off the top of my head, but there's a series called Die. And this is a story about a bunch of kids who sat down to play a role playing game and they got sucked into a world and they disappeared for 20 years. They come back and then, um, you know, several years later, they have to go back into the world of die. And it's a 20 issue series. Uh, it is coming to a close. I want to say in the next couple of months, but uh, one person ended up staying behind and things get weird as they go into the world of die and they go to each vertex and to each plane and have all of these really crazy adventures. And so not only are you getting a history of role-playing games, but you're also getting a history of uh, what's, you know, what's going on with these characters' lives over the last uh, 20 years. Oh, that's So it's rad. a fascinating book. It's it's so worth picking up, I Scott. Now, it's not on that. the DC Universe Infinite, yeah. but uh, Die from Karen Gillan uh, from Image Comics is, uh, I think, a must-read. It's an image book. Okay, cool. I could probably get that mm-hmm. on Comixology by, per issue or whatever I need to do. Yeah, they've got them in trades and everything as well. Like I said, it's only a 20-issue run. I wonder why, 20-sided die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think it'd be right up your alley. Yeah, I, it sounds totally up my alley. And right now i'm actually just irritated that i have to wait for issue 10 which i think is the <laughs> final issue i think of this run oh man i've been loving it and i always forget the artist's name it's kind of a hard name to remember but this guy oh i gotta i gotta follow everything he does now i'm so into it and it's bloody and violent that's the other thing i like about it i like me some good old hack and slash baby and uh this comic's full of it i will check out die that's great recommendation all right uh speaking of let's, we'll, we'll now swing back to the cowls and capes of our youth <laughs> okay. And talk about Batman the Long Halloween finally getting the animated treatment from WB Animation, one of the great, maybe the greatest in some people's minds, Batman story ever. It is a really good story. It's a uh, um Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale doing the art on that. So if you haven't read this, it's the story of the holiday killer who's going around and uh killing people in gruesome ways and I don't want to spoil too much uh of what the um what the story and how it plays out, but uh Every month, there's a new killing, and Batman is trying to follow the clues. If you have seen, which was the second Batman Nolan movie, The Dark Knight. Dark Knight. And then yeah, there was Dark, Dark Knight. Knight Rises was the third one. Yeah, The Dark Knight borrows a lot from The Long Halloween. Yeah. I keep hearing and the new movie watch, is supposed to poke a bunch at that. Year one, and then Long Halloween yeah, ideas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Now, the interesting thing that DC is doing, they're doing the exact same thing that they did with The Dark Knight Returns. They're making it a two-part movie. So the first um, version arrives in June, and part two will arrive in 2022, probably in January of 2022. So you're going to get probably a three to four hour animated movie out of this. The downside that I see from the trailer, and you can find the trailer over on uh, YouTube.com, is uh, now that they've finished their kind of new 50 or their Flashpoint storyline in the animated universe, they've kind of got a new art style that they're going with. And the closest that I can compare it to is it's got an archer look to it where everybody has a really thick black outline around them. 
um, with some flat colors on the inside. And so I'm not a super fan of that, but it but it works and it's well animated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's what they're doing with the long Halloween. So they're not using the Tim Sale style in this movie either. Yeah. Are they? Uh, yeah, that's the other thing is it very much you know, immediately look at some of this art and go, oh, that's way more like the comic that it's based on mm-hmm. than, than usual. Mm-hmm. Um, someone in the chat mentioned it. And this first thing in my mind was, hey, I'll bet Kevin Conroy is coming back. to her. He's not. He's not Batman nope. in this. They've got a bunch of different character actors who have done Batman over the years. Some are really good. Uh, this one is uh, Jason Eccles, uh, who was also in, played Red Hood and Jason Todd in Batman Under the Red Hood. Yeah. Um, so he will be playing Batman in Bruce Wayne in this. Uh, they give uh, a bunch of other people uh, some some stuff. I'm looking really quick to see if there's anybody that just jumps out at me. Uh, yeah, I don't so really just announce see somebody, to- some some famous person. Just joined the cast, and I can't remember what, who it was. Hmm. I can tell you that uh, my favorite, I mean, I, Kevin Conroy is the lord of all, right? He's just amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you could use him for everything, that'd be great. But come on, people, we can't, you know, mm-hmm. it can't be Batman and everything. My second favorite was always Bruce Greenwood. Mm. He's and, and if people are like, wait, why do I know that name? He's usually <laughs> like an actor in movies and stuff. He was yeah, uh, Star com- Trek. Uh- Oh right, pa- uh, Pike yeah. in that. Um, Pike, Captain mm-hmm. Pike in uh, the two, the, the the newer movies. That Dolores, movies. not Dolores Claiborne. Uh, what's the one where the girl gets, or the lady gets strapped to the bed, and then the husband dies, and then she's there all week, or all month? Uh, yeah. Gerald's game. Gerald's game. He's he's Gerald in that. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't think of anything else. But he's in tons of stuff. And Bruce Green, I Robot plays the bad guy in I Robot. Um, mm-hmm. He's just an amazing actor. Anyway, his voice is just about perfect for Batman, and I would have him any day of the week if they would have him, but I guess that's not who we get in this one. It's also unfortunate. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Uh, who, who's another good one? Uh, uh, Jeremy Sisto's pretty good. He was in that New Frontier thing. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, for some reason, um, what's his name from uh, Firefly comes to mind as doing something, but I know he didn't do a Batman voice. No, he was Hal Jordan in... Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Stuff. He was Hal Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, t- uh, I can't think of his name. What's wrong with me? Captain Malcolm Reynolds. Uh, yep. Oh, uh, Firefly. Yeah, yep. what's his name, though? What's mm-hmm. the actor's name? Oh, uh, Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion! Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's the voice of uh, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, Will Arnett's not going to do it, you guys in the chat. <laughs> he's great. Right. I yeah. like Will, Ar- Will Arnett, but... And his animated, yeah. his Lego dude is amazing, but I can't take him seriously in something like this. But anyway, uh, I'll take it. Whatever. Let's yeah, see. so we just have to wait until June. It'll come out. They're releasing this on Blu-ray and digital on the same day, which in the past, the digital version comes out about a month ahead of the Blu-ray version. So they must be pretty uh, excited about this one to make the digital people wait until uh, physical release date. I got that big, fat, hardbound trade version of this that sits mm-hmm. on a coffee table upstairs you have the absolute edition i do i love it yeah if if, if uh, listeners if you haven't seen the absolute editions um these are oversized volumes that are i don't want to say twice as big but they're almost the exact same measurement as the original art pages maybe just a little bit smaller mm-hmm. and so you really get to get in close and see the art there yeah um uh, dc does the absolute editions um, if you're a Hellboy fan, Dark Horse does. I think they're called the Library Editions. Yeah, and, but they're the exact same size. Yeah, I was actually. It's so funny. I was looking at the Hel- the the Hellboy, the um, Dark Horse app the other day, mm-hmm. and just trying to see what they were doing over there. And they don't. I need everyone needs to do do subscriptions. Like, what are you even doing? Mm-hmm. Like, do this. Yeah. I am so hooked on Marvel. Uh, what's it called? Unlimited. Unlimited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm so hooked on what what you do get with Comicsology Unlimited. Which is less lim- has more limited, <laughs> um, <laughs> but then DC uh, Universe, uh, D- DC Infinite has really surprised me with with, with uh, just how much is there. I, like I'm so hooked on that method now that I'm annoyed when I have to go buy a single issue or even a trade. It bugs me. Well, that's kind of what they're hoping for, right? Is that yeah. uh, Scott? Now you've reached the end of this. Now go buy issue ten yeah. of your favorite book, so that uh, the last god, so that you can pay full full price on that. Right? They want me to, that's for sure. But I'm just, oh, I'm so into it right now. But anyway, uh, long the long Halloween, you guys. I'm stoked. I'm ready for this. It's like, a good story. Yeah. There are two things that really matter to me coming up on the HBO Max front, and one is this, and the other is Dune. And everything mm, else is yeah. fine, and we'll, you know. Oh, is this weekend Mortal Kombat? That's this weekend, isn't it? 
Is Wasn't that, this that weekend? I thought that was pushed by a week, but oh, let's double man. check. Mortal Kombat 2021. Oh, Mortal Kombat! <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I shouldn't be, but I am. April 16th is what it says. Oh, April 16th, so that's this weekend. That's Friday. Yep, so this week. <laughs> Movie night with Kim. We're watching a, a bloody, violent Mortal Kombat. I'm so excited. Hilarious. Hope they get it right. Um, all right. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Oh. Theatrical release internationally beginning on the 8th, and then it will be in the United States on the 23rd. So Boo! there you go. So 23rd. Boo! No Mortal Kombat! <laughs> Get over here, I would say, to the series. Um, all right. yeah. Delayed combat. <laughs> yeah. D, uh, D, except you can't spell it with a K. Or wait, delay? De no, it doesn't work. Delayed combat. There yeah. you go. Black Adam. It's in production. This is your Rock, uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson deal, right? Yep. yep. Now, yeah. we, this is one of the things that, um, you know, we've talked about a number of movies that have been canceled or new castings for things, but until, you know, the film starts shooting, mm -hmm. these things can be canceled right away. So if you were ever wondering, a project that has been long in development, Black Adam, is now shooting, and they're in production, and so now you you know that this movie is going to come out July 29th, 2022. 2022, only in theaters, it says. So just a little over a year from now. Okay. Well, that's a bold uh, That's a bold prediction, but I, I like it. Let's get it and, in theaters. you know... It just depends on how, I mean, they've done a lot of pre-production. So right. you figure that they're going to spend 90 days, maybe max 90 days yeah. for shoots. Yeah. So the rest of the time is all just post-production and special effects. So I was reading, uh, uh, um, what's it called? Crap. DC's, um, oh, the deceased stuff I was talking about. Yeah, the DC series. Uh, Black Adam is a bastard in that. Holy mm -hmm. crap, dude. Yeah. Because he gets bitten. He gets, uh, he gets the disease and suddenly this thing turns from the world is full of horrible death zombies but now they're led by <laughs> black adam who's just tearing shit apart it's great it's real good i love that series i don't know why that series is so good it should be stupid just like marvel zombies should have been dumb it's not it's cool if you like zombies you like comics you should read those yeah uh awesome steven as always always great enter entertainment and stuff coming out of major spoilers anything on the network you want to mention to people uh, I don't think so this week. We've got a lot of shows that are coming out, of course, over at Majorspoilers.com, and you can find the complete uh, list. You can subscribe uh, to Major Spoilers Plus, just Major Spoilers with the plus sign over there on your iTunes, and you can get all of the shows that we produce on a weekly basis in one single feed. That's pretty good. What happens yeah. if you're thirsty over there? What do you do there? Well, then we tell everyone to uh, drink some water and stay hydrated. Fantastic. <laughs> Hail hydrated. Well done. All right. Well done. This makes me want to read comics all day. Talking mm -hmm. to Steven. I'm having a oh. real I'm having a real thing, Brian. Like comics right now and me you are. You totally are. Yeah, I love it. Makes me want to I don't know what it makes me want to do. Makes me want to read comics, I guess. <laughs> makes you want to read comics. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. <laughs> uh all right. Thank you, Steven. What else we got? Oh, hey, uh okay, a couple things here. We got a mashup to play from Jamie, but before we do, a note that he's gonna actually be on the show tomorrow. We'd plan on doing Yay. it Thursday, but had to change yeah. for some router router stuff. issues yep yeah. so we have routed him till tomorrow he'll be here right <laughs> after <laughs> or right before the news we're we're just going to pick his brain on how he freaking finds all this content and who yeah. would be the who has to work it takes to do what what he does yeah and how is he not sick of us like how are you not sick of us dude i don't get Maybe it he is i don't know i'm gonna ask him tomorrow okay how he's not sick of us but for now we're gonna play this mashup this one's called uh ups truck <laughs> Don't remember what this is, so enjoy. I got my hoe back to the crib with stacks of Benjamins and my pizzle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rock out with your pizzle out. Bitch better have my money. <laughs> Who does that? Pretty rude. Who does that? Despicable low life douchebags. Chode smackers. Yeah, chode smackers. Oh, uh, never trust a chode smacker. Chode smackers. They're the worst. TikTok teens, Tari, tumbling. Oh, shit. Let's see. Oh, you have the time you need to masticate and you're all good. Yes, I can be done masticating in about a minute and a half. <laughs> wow. Start to finish. Well done. Yeah. All your base is nearly eligible for COVID. <laughs> Oh. oh, excuse me. Claire Gack says, hey, kids, if you have a lady friend and you want to make her happy, use a peach for practice. What? Good night, everybody. What? Really? Who said that? <laughs>
Clear Jack. <laughs> There's not a big open bottle of gin near you right I've now. I've tried though. that, but I bruised the peach by squeezing it so hard. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Are you prepared to receive my swab, swabbed anus, anus, anus? <laughs> swabbed anus. Ugh. Oh, here's what it looks like inside. Very pink. I'm going to go it. get a chicken sandwich. <laughs> You're going to get a chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, yeah, it's a little dark. Darkish. Yeah. Darky. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I just say darky? I'm not going to say yeah, that this, again. <laughs> don't say that, Scott. No, I think that's a mistake. God, this is ruined me for both sex and waffles. That's the sad thing. <laughs> Put on your blindfold. Let it shine it's wherever you, you go. go. We'll take whatever you got. Dong. Yep. Dong. Dong. Plenty of dong. All the dong plenty we can dong. eat. Yep. Just dong everywhere. Just hanging around. Just dong. Tristan had the truck. He'd say, F- for truck and then he when we'd see a, a ups truck he'd call it a upus a upus and one day we we're with my grandparents actually we were coming back from my grandmother's funeral with my grandfather in the car and we see a ups truck and tristan goes you piss f- <laughs> how have you not told me this before that's so good well, i think i have told this story have before you? but oh, i think so yeah that's so good <laughs> That's one of my favorite things you ever so said. So funny. Yeah. So good. All right. Well, wherever you're at right now, uh, Tristan, just know you piss F as well. <laughs> Visiting the his uh, girlfriend's parents right now. He's oh. there in uh, Arizona. Lovely. It's a warm. It's a yes. war- it's a warm there. <laughs> maybe having some Navajo tacos. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Not a euphemism. All right, moving on. <laughs> That's right. We're going to do a quick note here about all the things you need to remember. For example, uh, supporting the show is easy and simple and rewarding over at patreon.com slash TMS. Head on over there and send us a dollar or more, and you'll be shocked at what you get for so little. Uh, that's right, mm-hmm. patreon.com slash TMS. Uh, frogpants.com slash TMS for everything else. Quick update on Rock Runners. We're going to open up a bunch of new stretch goals today because I, that's how these things work, I guess. So... Uh, if you want to find out more about what's happening with that game I mentioned earlier in the show, head on over to frogpants.com slash rock runners. Um, now I know we're recording the finale of ANTP tonight, but correct. Anything you want to tell folks about the current state we're in or where we're at or what's up? Uh, new episodes. So the patrons are getting new episodes today and tomorrow, I believe. And then, um, uh, free feeders get, uh, uh, the next episode this week, Wednesday, Thursday, I believe. No, Tuesday, Wednesday. But they're about a week, two weeks behind. So, I like the term free yeah. feeders. Free feeders free is feeders. cool. Yeah, yeah, you free feeders. Yeah, a bunch of free feeders. Uh, and the season finale of Soundography will be going up on the feed today as well. The band Cell Dweller. Ooh, I don't know who that is. Never heard of they them. They rock. They are. Um, it's really one dude, and it's. Uh, Really cool, kind of uh, electronic industrial kind of stuff. Oh, look at his hair. Really, really good. Yeah, he's got cool hair. Um, let's yeah. see. I'll go listen to some of this today. I like industrial. You should. Yeah. Music. Big fan. You should listen. It does a lot of video game music, so right. you like that a lot. Chip tune and uh, whatnot. Yes. Uh, not chip tune, but like. Um, oh, like soundtracks uh, and stuff for. Yeah, games. exactly. All exactly. right. Exactly. I'm in. Cell Dweller. I will check it out and also look forward to that. Soundography.com. Uh, what else? Uh, get Brian's newsletter, the cover letter. You can get it at uh, coverville.substack.com. Substack.com. Because Substack. yep. I did my dumb URL. I keep forgetting where it's sending people. <laughs> uh, oh, right. You did the club. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So if you want to go to mine, you can find it at frogpants.club. Should have a new issue going up today or tomorrow. And uh, that's it. Follow us on Twitter cool. if you haven't in a while or if you never have. Coverville for Brian. I'm at Scott Johnson. The show is at Morning Stream. Okay, we're done. Uh, let's get out of here. We're going to do a song, though. What do you got? I got a song. Uh, this one's going out to Jim Vic. Boy, I mentioned I needed some requests from you guys. You guys came through in uh, spades. Just lots of great requests. So uh, keep them coming, especially if you've got anniversaries or birthdays or things like that. This one's going out to Jim Vick. Good day, Scott and Brian. I've sent a request for others in the past, but this one is for me. On Monday, April 12th, I will have circled Earth for the 54th time. Whoa. I will be 913 days away from being able to retire from my job. I'm taking the day off from work and going on a bike ride and relaxing around the house. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah. I trust Brian to pick a good song to help celebrate my birthday. Thank you both for the years of great entertainment, Jim Vicks and Carlos. Nice. Um, 
well, of course, Jim, uh, happy to uh, to do that. I don't want to include your city. I hope I don't dox you there. Uh, anyway, he said he wanted something to represent the year he was born, 1967. And uh, one of the biggest songs of that year was Jefferson Airplane's White Rabbit. Actually, Jefferson Airplane did it as a cover of um, the band that uh, Grace Slick was with before Jefferson Airplane. And all of a sudden, the name of that band is not coming to me. So. Oh, uh... um, Oh, I can't think of it either. I used to yeah. know this. I used to know this. Yeah, Ugh. it's uh well, anyway. Uh anyway, whatever band she was with beforehand. Uh White Rabbit. <laughs> it's uh covered here by the band Collide. These uh, American speaking of kind of industrial sound, these guys are great. From their 2000 album Chasing the Ghost. Here's Collide and White Rabbit. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com so what did you think of tms it's pretty good <laughs> it was all right wow oh the great society was the name of the band i think that's um jefferson airplane isn't that the late great uh hold on so what did you think of tms that sounds like uh what's his face uh hello schenectady t- you're t- on the air larry <laughs> king yeah larry king i think it is but i don't remember the context of where i got that or anything mm-hmm. somewhere cool um, all right. Oh, 